Hello, Ankur. How are you? Hi, Pachin. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you as usual. Me and Ankur, we know each other from Toastmasters since three years, and we have been good friends there. Ankur is one of the best public speakers I know in my life. <laughs> it's good to have you here, bro. And of course, Ankur is a very, very productive person. That's why we are having him here. But before we speak about productivity, can you shortly introduce yourself, my dear brother? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, my name is Ankur. Uh, I'm from India. Uh, uh, talking about myself, uh, I work with uh, CEOs. I help them in enhancing their business as well as uh, work bandwidth. So I help them basically in terms of strategy and business development. So uh, for past four years, I have been working with CEOs. Before that, I was under various role of project management. And uh, you know, uh, productivity is one of the key aspects in project management, especially in infrastructure sector. And that's why when uh, I had a discussion with Barchin about the topic, so I was more than happy to share my experiences. So uh, that's about my work. Apart from that, I love traveling. Uh, not as much as Perchin do. <laughs> I think he has traveled to more than 70 odd countries. I have not been fortunate enough to do that. But yeah, uh, in my capacity, I love traveling and reading books. Uh, I also like to meet new people. And that's how I met Perchin as well uh, during one of our uh, meetings in Toastmasters. And I think since then, we have been very good friends. Uh, I had great time interacting and talking with Perchin. I think we had to spend a lot of time during my stay in Turkey. We talked about our travel experiences, about the books he has written, about the ventures he is starting. So uh, it's always good. It's always good to talk to Pachin. And you know, one of the basic essence of productivity is to talk to like-minded people from whom you can learn and absorb ideas, which uh, they are implementing. That actually helps in enhancing your personal productivity as well. So uh, yeah, so that was a very brief description about myself. Uh, now I'll uh, hand over the virtual stage back to Pachin. <laughs> like a little Toastmasters meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I think actually you touched a very good point, Ankur, that's being with like-minded people at similar frequencies, it really increases your productivity because you take them as examples. But before all this, I want to ask you, what does productivity mean to you? What does this term mean to you? So, uh, of course, you know, there are many theoretical definitions available to it. But uh, if I have to say in terms of my understanding, I would say uh, productivity is basically a uh, balance between two very essential components. Uh, one is the trade off uh, of your time. And second is the trade off with urgent versus what is important. So uh, just to give a context to it, uh, see, there have been a lot of conversation about artificial intelligence and machine learning and about how artificial and intelligence and machine learning is going to drive the future. Well, of course, it, it will drive the future. But does it make sense for me to uh, go and start investing my time in learning AI and machine learning stuff? Does that make sense to me? Uh, well, yes, probably that could help me in enhancing my knowledge and enhancing my uh, understanding of the subject. But is this the most productive use of my time? Uh, will I be able to create, uh, let us say, some value out of it? Or will I be able to add some personal value to myself apart from, uh, you know, just uh, adding some brief, uh, uh, brief knowledge about a particular subject or domain? So it becomes very important that how you trade off with the time, whichever is available with you. What is the best utilization of the time which is available with you? Uh, that is one thing. And the second thing is uh, about being productive is, uh, uh, the uh, the categorization of what is urgent and what is important. Uh, I'm very sure, uh, Pachin, you would have read uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where he talks uh, elaborately about this kind of subject and how this uh, you know single most policy is creating a lot of uh, mismanagement in terms of uh, time and the way people uh, deal with their priorities. So it's very important you understand uh, what is urgent and what is important for you because we invest a lot of time in doing urgent tasks. And sometimes we, uh, in a way, uh, don't uh, give that much of attention or that much of our bandwidth to do the tasks which are important for us. So uh, productivity basically lies in doing important tasks, trading off your time uh, in uh, doing tasks which are important for your personal value, which are important for enhancing uh, your uh, uh, self uh, personality, enhancing your understanding of things. So to me, yeah, that would be a, a very practical definition of uh, productivity for me. Yes, so I don't have time. It's not a valid thing because it's all about prioritizing, right? 
Absolutely. Mm. And what about you, Ankur? Do you consider yourself a productive person? I mean, I consider you a productive person. <laughs> but not every productive person considers themselves as productive. So what is your internal feeling? Do you approach yourself with enough self-love? And are you satisfied with your own self and performance? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think it's a very difficult question to answer uh, because, you know, self-assessment is one thing which... Uh, probably is uh, uh, is is something which is not uh, you know that easy. You can't do it, uh, especially when it comes to talking about uh, uh, or critically examining your own habits and uh, abilities. So I think uh, productivity has a lot to talk about discipline. Uh, a lot of that comes from the fact that whether you are self-disciplined or not. So I try to be disciplined as disciplined as possible. Uh, uh, I have seen. Uh, Uh, for example, you you have been reading a lot in last uh, few quarters. I understand. Uh, I think in our last discussion, you mentioned the number of books which you have read alone in this year was. I think that number was close to thirty or forty. What was it, Parshin? I don't count, but I sent you the list of the names I read. I don't send yeah. numbers, but so, because I take notes. So, so I mean, <laughs> it's it's always a relative thing. Uh, what are you benchmarking yourself against? Uh, so if I'm uh, trying to benchmark myself against you in terms of reading the books, uh, will I consider myself protect, uh, productive? Uh, well, uh, I doubt so because I haven't read even uh, you know six or seven books in this year. I would have read just three or four. So, but uh, at this point of time, is that my priority? Uh, is that something which uh, I really want to do at this point of time? So, uh, but. But that way, I think it's a very personal uh, uh, thing that, uh, you know, what are the factors you want to consider when you are talking about the self-assessment in terms of productivity? Uh, someone who wants to invest more time with the family can call themselves productive if they are managed to invest more time with their family. Somewhere who likes to do self-learning, who likes to uh, acquire new skills, if they are able to invest uh, their time doing that, then they, they can call themselves pro uh, productive uh, for that matter. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, I try to be self-disciplined. I try to uh, engage into things or activities which I believe will help me in enhancing my skill set. Uh, but I also try to have a fair balance between my professional productivity and personal productivity. Because professional productivity is something which uh, which is right there. I mean, I have to do it. It's an obligation. I have to perform the task for which I'm getting paid for. Uh, but when it comes to personal productivity, where there is no added incentive, where there is intrinsic motivation that only derives the uh, personal productivity. So it becomes very important to have that motivation up and to have that definite purpose that can actually drive you towards that intrinsic uh, productivity. So yeah, that would, would be my take on the productivity version. Yes, bro. Inner motivation and having a why, why am I doing this and internalizing it is absolutely crucial. And what about your methods, bro? For example, I use calendars and Ever not, I use some tools and I have some certain methods that I use to be productive. What about you? Uh, Technical methods. So, uh, yeah, so I think uh, this question I can answer because, you know, for the large part of my life, I have been uh, uh, a very fond supporter of multitasking and I have been doing it for, uh, I mean, quite a few years. But, you know, it's very recently when I've realized that uh, there is no concept as multitasking, it's switch tasking. You're basically moving from one task to another. And that I believe has been one of the key learnings for me. Uh, you know, Mozart once said that if you want to get a lot of things done, then do one thing at a time. So uh, I think that way it's very important that uh, how you are managed to focus on one particular activity and getting it done. That is uh, the most important aspect which I have learned in the last few years. And uh, I think it also resonates with the psychology with which the brain functions. You know, uh, if you uh, are familiar with the concept of shallow learning versus deep learning, like most of the people, uh, they listen to podcasts. Uh, I mean, random podcasts, which are like one minute, two minutes podcast. And they, uh, you know, uh, while it, it stimulates their brain, it makes them feel that they have learned new thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, there is always something uh, more to it. Uh, and that is where the deep learning comes into the uh, picture. So uh, you should uh, you should keep these things as a base and try to build things on it. So shallow learning should be actually reinforced with the deep learning. Then uh, the actual learning happens, and that can lead to a productive uh, mindset. 
uh, only depending on shallow learning is very much learning for entertainment and that does not go a long way if you see uh, napoleon hill also in his book has talked about the uh, the value uh, in terms of uh, the experts i mean if you are an expert in a particular domain or you are just a uh, you know a uh, jack of all trades so that trade off is also there so if you want to really be an expert in a particular domain you have to reinforce the shallow learning with the deep learning and uh, that comes uh, with uh, uh, with focusing on one task at a time and giving your all 100% and closing it completely you know closing the loop is most important thing which we talk in most of our project management discussions and you see most of the ceos they would be always focusing on uh, closing the deal so that's why it becomes very important that you pick a particular task and you close it and then you move on to the next assignment i'm muting myself while you speak in order not to have an external sounds so that's why this little gap i'm i'm muting myself but it's been going great so far by the way i'm also listening to you with uh, awe and inspiration <laughs> so i'm like <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, this is a short interview, as you know, because there are a lot of reasons. Because the attention span is low, uh, even though it's very interesting, people prefer shorter videos, and I don't want to take too much of your time. So I'll ask one last question, dear uncle, and that is for people who want to come closer to their actual potentials and go beyond that, and people who want to be productive at a conscious level but don't know how to start that on a subconscious level so if somebody came to you like a younger relative or just a friend of a friend and say uncle you're being super productive and i'm really impressed and i want to ask you because i want to be like that one day where shall i start teach me master <laughs> what would you say uncle what would be one of the first things that would be a lot to say obviously but what would you say in the beginning to that person okay uh so uh i think it's a it's a kind of a question which uh, a lot of us have i think even i have had so many uh times you know a uh, question that whether will i be able to finish a particular assignment which i have picked up so i mean of course the motivation drops motivation fluctuates at a different uh, level or at a different uh, period during a journey and so if i have to give one suggestion uh, in terms of being productive uh, or in terms of reaching to the full potential uh, is what you have asked question then i would say that you know uh, we are living in a very uncertain time and uh, we cannot say that okay this is a, this is a particular code and this is going to run on all the uh, all the programs so uh, you have to keep on uh, devising it you have to keep on devising new techniques in which you can actually read on the entire process so i would say uh, that uh, uh, the most important uh, th uh, the most important aspect of being productive is the ability to develop the mindset of solving problems you know you will have problems in your daily life uh, and those problems will probably shatter your plan or you have to uh, reroute your plan or you have to change your plan or you have to make a completely new plan altogether so don't get attached to a particular idea or a particular notion that uh, if you uh, accomplish this thing then you would you can call yourself productive so don't have a particular fixed uh, mindset uh, you know try to have a, a evolving mindset try to have a evolving goal ev evolving ambition especially in today's uncertain times and see what best you can do with the time which is available with you you know uh, it becomes uh, it becomes also critical to examine how things are unfolding uh, around you you know situational awareness and situational leadership is one thing which is highly valued uh, in the ceos community as well because you know uh, 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 i work with ceos uh, on a daily basis i see them solving problems so you know none of uh, none of the days they face the same set of problems or they don't use the same principles in solving all the problems every time they are coming up with a different solution uh, for problems and therefore it becomes very important uh, to have that set or have that understanding of problem solving and embracing the uncertainty which is around you and uh, still taking the decisions any which way so uh, so yeah i mean uh, things will change around you your plans might not work you might feel that you are not being productive a uh, few days will go few years will go sometimes decades also go but you can always start afresh and always start with the motivation of solving the problem which is there in the hand 
and the moving ahead. I think that is one principle that has helped work for me and uh, would probably work for others who follow as well. When you told this, the two words that came to my mind is resilience and flexibility. And I think they're super important skills in life. As you said, mm -hmm. those and with enough health, you can always restart regardless how many times you fail. <laughs> Thank you, Akur. It was great to hear from such an inspirational person. And your experiences, your knowledge and your wisdom always is my pleasure. I learn a lot myself and I'm sure people who will watch or listen to this will also get inspired. So I really want to thank you and I really appreciate it, bro. Do you have anything else you want to say before we say goodbye? Likewise, <laughs> Likewise Persian. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And I'm very sure that uh, uh, there was something useful for your audience as well. And I see that you have audience from across the globe. So a big congratulations on that as well. And I have been personally seeing your videos on time management and uh, various other videos which you have produced of it and they have been very useful and the best part about uh, Parchin is uh, he does not put any subject uh, without doing the proper research so if Parchin is mentioning anything or if he is uh, coming up with a particular suggestion or an idea you can trust that he would have done a lot of research a lot of homework and then only he would put that content uh, to the uh, public and audience so uh, yes uh, uh, I can totally trust Perchin with his understanding and with his methodology with which he functions and the values which he holds. So all the best to uh, to you, Perchin, for your work and uh, a very a very <laughs> I mean a very warm uh, rest of the year for your audience as well because 2020 has been difficult so far. But let's hope uh, that we at least end it on a good note. So yeah, namaste. Thank you, Perchin. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Take care.